Yo, what's up? On this episode, we got my boy Michael Harrison. Uh, we discuss how selfish women can be, spotting red flags, are we attracted to status, and the difference between status and value, how instinctual attraction works, and how confidence is the ultimate aphrodisiac. That's right. And also, uh, if you love the show, please support us on Patreon if you can. Uh, for a, a little bit, you get uh, some bonus content. We answer listener mail. We do some bonus shows, uh, including uh, this show we do with Michael, a little bit of a bonus. This one's fun. Uh, who was the worst guest on the show we talk about? We name names. Uh, what happens if you sell your body for sex? How being unaffected is the most attractive thing and manipulative tools that people use all the time. Uh, support us because it helps us keep the show going. Uh, Patreon.com slash Manschool202 to help us out. Join the Patreon and uh, enjoy the show. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what up? Your Square Pimp Brigade, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcast. And I am excited. I'm ready to rock and roll. Because um, we got a special show. Now, I may have said that 500 times before. <laughs> but this time, I mean. Yeah. For real, um, this time. First yeah. and foremost, Harry, how you doing? You ready to rock and oh, roll? Oh, man, I am excited. Let's do it. I'm excited. We got some international flavor. See all the way up <laughs> to Canada. That's how far we go. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's how far. Uh, <laughs> uh, you could introduce the guest. Uh, yes, uh, this dude, I, I met him a couple years ago. Good friend of Gina Brion, that's how I met him. Uh, we we uh, we work together. Funny, funny dude. Enjoyable guy to watch. A really enjoyable guy to watch. Um, the funny, and, the legendary. And, and <laughs> no. I, don't, Harrison, I, don't, I don't say that a lot, am I right? Uh, you don't say that a lot. I, I don't say it a lot. He, he says I'm special, though. He says special a lot, though, right? That's true. Special he guest. Special. <laughs> but he uses it in the real way, yeah. not the sarcastic way for Michael Harrison. Yeah, and and I, I just want I like this dude. Always was a good dude uh-huh. uh, to me, and, and, and give it up for Michael Harrison. Thank uh, you. Give it up, y'all. Give right it up, on. Up, up. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad. I'm glad because, you know, you hit me up, and I was like, uh, yeah, let's get you in. And so. Yeah. I'm glad you were available. You you've been touring a little bit, yes? Yeah, it's been crazy. Where you been at? Oh God, I had to go over on the cruise ship. Oh, <laughs> I know, I was on a cruise ship during the whole COVID mess. Wow. Yeah. Did they get it? Or did Dude, it was hilarious. There was two singers who who got COVID right. and two dancers. So I was supposed to do like this, you know, sort of PG-13 show yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. at this nice little cabaret space, mm-hmm. and then they moved me to the main theater. And I ended uh, up offending someone. Like you? Yeah. How were you? You're not offensive, dude. dude. It, it was hilarious. I was doing like some crowd work with the audience, and then some something came up about uh, just about pets, and I was like, oh yeah, I saw a woman just with a what is it pushing a dog in a stroller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Fort Lauderdale. So then I, I made like some joke about that. And a woman got up, left, and told uh, told the ship captain that I was making fun of people with, uh, <laughs> with mental strollers. disabilities. Right? Said I was making fun of uh, fun of that because she needs an emotional support dog. I didn't even know this woman existed. Right. So she asked them to kick me off the boat. That was that <laughs> was how far. So what happened? Did it did it did you end up fucked over by it? Or? No. I, well, I was off the boat in a day anyways because I was right. only scheduled for half of it. Right. And it was hilarious because another comic, Stephen Scott, was supposed to be on I the know, second Steve, half. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He came on. And then he got COVID, and he didn't even perform. He wow. ended up oh, wow. quarantining. So wow, I know. And now, do you think you'll be able to go back or no? Uh, the co- yeah, they did. They asked for my schedule, but they they did give me like a, a what is it? They just didn't back me up at all. Like the a cruise warning. ship themselves was like, well, maybe you should think about what kind of jokes you tell. And I'm like, I wasn't. I never brought up mental yeah. illness, you know, or right. any of that. This they're woman, there. did they yeah. have it recorded or no? Where you could. They didn't record it. Oh, Normally, so, they're supposed to, right? So I could yeah. easily defend myself, but yeah. yeah. You better record it next time, and even if you do an audio, just to make sure. Actually, it, I did have that, so I did right. send them the audio, but at that point, they their minds are made anyway. is that, oh, this woman says you made fun of people with mental disabilities. Man, that, that's what I, the thing I hate about cruise ships. It's just like you got to, like some goofy bitch who needs to push a dog around in a stroller. <laughs> 
You goofy bitch. Fuck you. Yeah, no kidding. You know what even cracks me up too? Is like like the ship captain's like, yeah, she was crying and everything. And I was like, clearly this emotional support dog doesn't work. <laughs> right, right. right? Yeah, she needs yeah, more too. emotional support dogs. You need an <laughs> emotional <laughs> hippopotamus. <laughs> cut you in half, you goofy bitch. Yeah, no kidding. It, it just the the fact that they'll think that you uh you like you you, you wrote this pull. joke to offend them right like I, nobody gave a fuck about, you know how long i've been doing this joke dude? yeah when you w didn't know you needed an emotional support dog yeah. you fucking idiot but it is what it is no kidding um, just, and not shit. only that yeah it was, it was just a bit in strollers i was like you know emotional support dogs have leashes like yeah. it's a joke still stands i didn't even know yeah, i didn't even know that it was the stroller yeah, thing that, yeah <laughs> you fucking awful bitch exactly so dude. yeah uh, that you know that, that's what well, I've been performing for. Let's hope she got COVID. Am I right? Yeah, right, right, right. Hey. <laughs> hope she got the Omarion, too. It's Omarion. Exactly. Yeah. And Delta. We'll go and for all of them. Go back all to three. back. What was the first one? Uh, COVID. The OG. <laughs> COVID. The OG, OG COVID. COVID. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I hope that bitch gets polio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you want an old school. You don't want to go old yeah. school. Rickets oh, and polio. Rickets. Get her. Scurvy. Everything. Everything. <laughs> On top of each other. Whooping cough. I hope she gets the whooping cough. The whooping cough. <laughs> oh my god so, Money Mike just uh, broke up with you know, Had a little girlfriend Some things Yes what, How long were you with her? Four years And what happened? Oh man uh, What is it? She decided not to pay rent Right, oh, wow. so it started off that way. Wow. Yeah, it's actually sort of funny, Dante. Uh, what is it? And this this might take me three the minutes landlord, to explain. The landlord didn't think so, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. We well, that was, a, time. that was a funny thing is like when COVID went down, all of a sudden, oh, man, we had to make a decision about should we renew? And the place was like 3400 a month. Mm -hmm. So so we did it. And then all of a sudden, other places in the you know in our complex dropping. started yeah. dropping. Right. So she just felt it was unfair. Right. So. So come around, I think it was like... Well, you did renew or you didn't? You did renew, well, we did but renew. then COVID came and everybody right. left. Yeah. And everybody right, went home. So prices yeah. went down. and she How thought far that was did unfair. the prices go down? Oh, man. People were getting theirs for like 2600 Wow. Right? Yeah. So that's pretty... That's pretty... Ew. But uh, yeah. what a the deal? So we had 3400 Right. And she just decided, you know what? I don't want to pay rent. <laughs> the the guy, what is it? The courts aren't going to look into any case for a while. Right. And I bet you any money right. that we'll just settle, blah. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. Just the only thing is I'm going to pay you my rent every month. And I don't want this ever getting back to me because I'm an immigrant and I'm going for oh, citizenship. Yeah, you oh, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, 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 right. So that was that you was. You can't the deal. just do that. You can't for you. you I can't. can't just do yeah. That. yeah. Luckily, yeah. you know, it's like yeah, just I can't be a part of that. She's were you on, on the, the lease, lease or she was all on? She's the... on the lease. Okay. Uh, but that regardless, was regardless. He can't be named in a fucking right, right, right. He uh, can't legal be documents. Yeah, hundred percent. He's, right? he's, a, he's yeah. an immigrant, even though he's Canadian. Those are still immigrants. <laughs> Go back where it came from. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Canadians are still immigrants. We forget that. <laughs> yeah, we I just need a clean record. Yeah, That's it. yeah, yeah. Right. I'm like, t I'm like, this feels like uh, what is it? An audition to be American. These right. five years, right, 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 right. Like, yeah. you know, you're like, how are we gonna be? So I'm like, all okay, right, let's. Uh, so, uh, I gotta keep this clean. Right. Uh, so what is it? She, does, so she, decides, she decides not to pay. Decides not to pay. She the decides rent. not to pay. So Fuck I this pay. Landlord will settle. Yeah. So I pay every you know month as I do, and I'm on tour a bunch and whatever. You're paying her every month. Yeah, yeah. I paid her because like like I say, I have to do things my way. I have to do things right. correctly. You gotta do it right. Legally, uh, right. I right. don't want anything against me. So I do that, and then sure enough, uh, what is it? One of the days I was there, uh, someone knocked on the door. I open it up. And someone presented me a lawsuit with my name and said, we're taking you to court for not paying. And I was like, what? How did they put your name on it when you weren't on the paperwork? Turns out that they, they'd already went after her a month, a month earlier. She never told me this. And right. she screamed at them and said, get away, and kept the door lock and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So Didn't bother to tell you. Yeah, it didn't tell me this. So, this whole so they crazy went to me thing. because I had to sign to get keys. So they did have my name and they did have some info uh. on me because I needed that in order to be given a set of keys. So, yeah, they obviously the, the next step is to go after whoever's in the place.
So they so you can me- name anyone in a legal document, basically. Yeah. Yep. It's up until yeah. yeah not if fair. they don't know you, player. No, <laughs> that's true. Prince Mandingo has never got served. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> never. This is some really? gr- This is a great lesson. Wow. All right. Yeah, Prince yeah, yeah. Mandingo has never gotten served. Well, it was a lot easier when Prince Mandingo. There's a lot of less, a lot less of a digital footprint for yes, Prince Mandingo. That is true. In all that's true. Yeah, yeah. America's most wanted has. Yeah. It. He might have had a driver's <laughs> license. Just keeps Prince away. Mandingo, Prince Mandingo had a, bl- a driver's license. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Prince, Prince Mandingo had a so system. My work, e- my work ID said Prince Mandingo on it. it didn't, I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> so, so, okay, so Jesus. So she fucks you over here. So, that, yeah, then I just go to her, and obviously I'm like, you know, angry. Hey, and I'm like, all right, fuck? well, you got to settle this. This is it. This is the one thing I told you can happen. I didn't want it can't to happen. come yeah. back to me. Right. And it is. And she said, no, nah, I'm in too deep. And then the next day she went to Italy. <laughs> she was in Italy for three. By the way, this girl makes like 120 grand a year. She works at like the second highest paying hospital in mm-hmm. America as a nurse. And then I was just. So could have afforded this rent. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So sure enough. And she, it's half. It's not even the, the full, full 34. Amount. It's yeah, half. Right? So then she goes off to Italy with her friend, and that's where I was like, she's just like not responding to me. And I was like, okay, I break up with you. And I moved out while she was in Italy. Oh, and good, And that's man. how it happened. And I sent good. her the email and everything. And yeah, she's been trying to get back together with me. Oh, she has been trying. Yes, how, she has. How's the legal thing happen? What's, what's happened with that? Well, I went down and I paid it all. So I paid 15 grand. So I went straight to the shitty. No, I paid it because I can't have that on my head. Have it on you. I can't can't, have it. Can't earn if you. If she's not gonna do anything, I just took care of it. I went and paid fifteen grand, and then and then you're off the. Is she still there? No, she moved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't sue her for that. I think you can. No, I don't think so. He's not. He's not trying to make no waves. I guess so. He is. uh, One one day I remember being in a backyard in a. Yeah, he is in, right. In, Maybe it's not working. In, uh, <laughs> in Washington Heights. And um, there was this huge rooster. <laughs> like, like, oh, my like uncle a, lived there? Like a fucking, <laughs> like a a fucking turkey. Yeah. Like a 30 pound rooster. Mm-hmm. And I remember looking at uh, on, the, on the wall, there was a cat that was tiptoeing. <laughs> like, oh, no. Wow. Don't wow. let this motherfucker see me. <laughs> That's. <laughs> that's Mike. That's Mike yeah. in the, the, in the United States. Just tiptoeing around that big hey ass. Hey man, I don't want no problems. <laughs> I don't want to. Fuck I have to. Man. No, I get it. I get it. Once hey, I get that just... citizenship, I could let go. Right. <laughs> then my mom. Then you're gonna sue that bitch. Yeah, I'm going after everybody. How long Everyone's gonna know what I think of them. Um, <laughs> but till then, I'm uh, polite. Was it be. difficult to get the uh, the work? V- you have a work visa then. A green card. A green card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, it, wow. And how much? And that's like what ten grand, right? Yeah. T- ten or more? Ten. Cost me ten. You yeah. know what? It was great though, because at the time you guys were on par currency wise. So oh. it actually cost me ten grand. Right oh, now for a Canadian, it costs like fifteen grand. Really? That's uh, how yeah, it's, yeah. it's American. Down. Fifteen grand ten. American. Well, fifteen grand Canadian. Fifteen grand Canadian. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I only had to spend ten grand Canadian at the time. Right, right. You know, but now, now like it's so crazy. my brethren. <laughs> if they wanted wow. to to come now, that's crazy. And then, uh, so, what's the conversation about her trying to get back with you? Like, what is the? the- you know, she just uh, she thinks I should just forgive the mistake. She's now finally owning up to uh, you know. I didn't know it'd create anxiety for you. I thought you, you know t- you're overreacting. You and, and I said I was like, create, I set this create, up. Yeah, I said this up front. By the way, anxiety is kind of that's a little passive aggressive. Yeah. Wow. You, what, you know, what, I didn't know I didn't oh. know you were gonna be a little bit of a bitch about this. Yeah, anxiety. You're like, it's not about anxiety. It's about <laughs> me getting kicked out of me. the country. You dude. You know, you know what was the big the big kicker is when she's like, I just couldn't do it because I was in too deep. And I was like, you're in too deep. I'm in a whole new country with yeah. no family. And, minus, right? and, and minus 15 grand. Yeah, minus 15 grand. You should tell her. Well, I guess you don't want to get back with her. But you could be like, listen, you pay me back the fucking 15 grand. I gotta, then we can have a, a fucking dinner. Yeah, she did offer to pay back. So, oh, and, and I didn't take it. Oh, you did take it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I Wait, mean, not, you did take it? I did take it. I had to. Oh, I was okay. like, no, are you I kidding me? I yeah. Yeah. Initially, I just spent it, and I was like, oh, man, I'm going to be hurting for a minute. You know? Like, right, I right. found a really cheap place, uh, so I'm not living in luxury, ladies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is that the place you're at now that I did the recording? No. Oh, no that's not your place. Nope. No. That's yeah, but here, here's the thing. He's not living in luxury, but he's also showed himself 
to back his woman up. Yes. Fifteen grand deep, bitches. Yeah. Oh, get on, get on board, or get right. left I behind. I now have that's fifteen right. grand back. So I guarantee and now he's got to that. back. Yeah. So he has the willing. <laughs> he yeah. is willing to support his Look woman. Let me show off my money. I might have <laughs> we'll fifteen grand now, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> we'll guarantee. Su- don't even matter the grand. It's that you will support your woman. You have because the same way that goofy bitch was like, uh, I didn't know this was gonna be anxiety for you. Is who she is. Yeah. yeah. That's well. Let me ask. Such a red flag, right? Well, yeah, but did yeah. what was the red flag before that? It had to be. I mean, uh, before that. Yeah. yeah. That was a giant red flag. I mean, you got to remember. I guess love well, was there means anything that you be- could. Was there anything before that? Had to yeah. be. Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, she. There's obviously there's times where they try to emasculate you. Like that seems to be the trick of the woman is like to try to emasculate you a little bit if you're. What did you feel she did? As, uh, well, as, she as, always as, wanted kids. Right. I always wanted kids. And kids was like, I was like, fine, but like, let's make us work first. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's like, yeah, that's not let's bad. Figure out how, how that's we are. It's not a bad way to, to, to put it in order. You right. Know, let's exactly. make sure we're good so we don't just bring some kid into some fucking insanity. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so. What should it come uh, three years ago? We should have spoken to you three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thought they had a baby <laughs> that is uh, now in England. Speaking of international yeah, stuff. I got an international baby. You got an international baby from Brooklyn. There you go. Brooklyn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brooklyn's in there. Hey, mate. I like, call him up. Just, hey, mate. <laughs> Cheers. So, um, but what was the what was the red flags before? Like, there, you have can't been. have this bigger thing where she goes fuck you and then goes to I'm in too deep and then goes to Italy. Yep. There had to be a lot of selfishness. Well, I mean, she's a, a think about it this way. She makes a ton of money. Oh, by the way, she's an immigrant too. She's from Ghana. Okay. So she's uh, not that that has anything to do with anything, but she's very, she was very hard headed. You know, she's mm. a little stubborn, uh, which is absolutely fine. You know, people have their personalities, but yeah, she, those aren't red flags per se, but obviously that led into power struggles. That's what relationships are. Like, you have to try to control those yeah, power but, struggles and they'll start but, inflating because she only had one real big want and I wasn't what going was her, for the, it. What's so, the kid? Children. Yeah, the children. so I'm like, it's a, to her. I feel like, you know, I feel like. I, I think if you look at this in retrospect, mm-hmm. like what I find is anytime I counsel dudes, anytime dudes go through some stuff, um, it's always the, the incident that breaks the camel's back is nothing. Uh, it's never the same thing. And, you know, you know, Keith Malley, right? Yes. Good. So when, <laughs> I've said this a couple uh, of times. That's but, fine. It's um, been a while. Uh, <laughs> it again. It's always fun Keith, to hear it again. Keith was married. Yep. And, uh, he was with his girl, and he came on the show, and he goes, I got problems. Uh, this bitch. He was like, you know, really? that keeps the fucking. Yeah. He goes, huh? she will not close the cabinets, the kitchen cabinets. Yep. And she uses the towels, wet towels, and there's wet towels all over the floor. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, well, have you had a conversation about this? And he goes, yes. Have you had a conversation about that? He goes, yes. Okay, yes. I go, you, you should take all the cabinets doors off the cabinets <laughs> right and he goes oh blah, 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 blah. we laughed it off yeah, right yeah, yeah. and then the that's next- only dante can do that <laughs> dante, <laughs> <you're crazy. laughs> i'm not you ah it's too extreme, <laughs> too blah, extreme. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> next time he comes back he's divorced Wow. And what I was saying, what what I was thinking about even then <laughs> was that like we're when you're talking about kitchen cabinets it's not about the kitchen cabinets right but it's something as small as listen this, uh, I it's love about the disrespect. You. We're living together. This is is really gets under my skin, mm-hmm. and and uh, you know we don't have. This is something that we could eliminate. Mm-hmm. You know, sure there may be thing you talk about. Maybe the I'm not gonna have your kids. That's a whole nother thing. But yeah. I'm saying, but could you close the kid? It, it's really, and could you not leave wet towels all over the floor? Yeah. And he had conversation with her, and uh, she. Yes, them to death and just kept doing it. Yeah. And what I was trying to explain to him then is the, the real thing is that she doesn't give a fuck about what makes you happy. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, I know it seems like a small thing. Maybe she, this is just a habit where she leaves the kids. But it's not a habit if if I've had a conversation with yeah. you mm-hmm. specifically about this. This bothers me. Could you please fix it? Could you could you 
make an amendment, so whatever, Dante's whatever, whatever. way to go is cut to the end of this. Let's take the kitchen cabinets off. Kit, kit the, cut the kim, kitchen I, cabinets off. I, I yeah, suggested... Don't get me kicked out of this country. And yeah. that, was, that was my kitchen cabinet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keith <laughs> said that was too extreme, and I uh, we came up with some alternating suggestions. <laughs> I said he should put on a karate gi, and if they're open, <laughs> just start <laughs> roundhouse kicking. Going, roundhouse <laughs> kicking. <laughs> kick them off. Put his fist through them. Right? I said that. and then I sort of like this podcast, because this podcast has you talking about other podcasts I wasn't on. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, please tell me the best of other podcasts. We love good gossip. <laughs> well, let me tell you about Keith Malley's yeah. episode. <laughs> that, what a great one. He didn't want to. Bre- <laughs> he didn't want to break the cabinets, so I came up with another suggestion. I said, okay, if you want to break the cabinets, you want to remove them. Just draw swastikas on the inside of the cabinet, <laughs> <laughs> and let's see how much she really wants to leave those cabinets yeah. open. You know, she chose to get divorced. Yeah. Uh, but you, on a on a on a fundamental level, what a way to learn if she does want to keep those cabinets <laughs> open. Swastikas there is like, yeah, that does point, work. Like, Touche. <laughs> yeah. Touche. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, you come in all the cabinets, <laughs> and she's she's saluting you. <laughs> yeah. That would be worse, but yeah. at least you'd know. At least yeah, you know. Exactly. At least you know sooner. Yeah. That's, this is something we should. To discuss, but I'm glad I know now. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think you 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 get a situation where these things are happening in a smaller way. Like for him, it was the kitchen cabinets, which he didn't do. But it, it's really what does the what's the subtext? I what, mean, also keep in mind too, I'm a comedian, so obviously a lot of the big the big problems is just like my touring schedule. Sometimes, you know, that's like with a lot of yeah. uh, like the you know what's so funny is the girl I broke up with before her. Um, it was, uh, what is it? She got engaged six months after we broke up. Okay, to a dude who looked just like oh, me. No, unreal, unreal. Yeah, that's that's and you know, you know what is that's sort of crazy? Doomed. Yeah, I, I broke up with her, but you know what's sort of crazy too is that he's a pilot, and I'm like, she hated me for touring. I'm like, is there anyone worse than a comedian <laughs> than a on pilot? The road more than a pilot. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, you know what's oh, interesting wow. about that the the thing that the thing that attracted you about uh, pro- what what probably attracted her to you in the first place was your unavailability to a certain extent. Oh, like, that's so, interesting. Yes. So then you just you, you know we do this over and over again. We I, I bet you what did her father do? Uh oh, the, of the Ghana lady? No, not the one before the that. Pilot. Oh, the one before her? The one who married the pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Well, she was from Guyana, so her father oh, actually. You got a type. You stay in the chocolate, yeah. huh? Mike? Loved chocolate, <laughs> no, right? she was Indian. Oh, oh really? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. It's still chocolate, yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> milk, <laughs> milk chocolate, Guyanese. Yeah, yeah Guyanese. Guyanese. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's chocolate. That's chocolate. No, no, no. Guyanese is half Indian, I believe. Right? Half Indian. What's the other half, Mike? It depends. Yeah, obviously, yeah. The other half. That's what we're talking about, Mike. You're three fourths. I've only known two relationships. Three fourths is chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) Three fourths chocolate at the least. That's dark chocolate. I'm gonna go one and three fourths. One and three fourths. (laughs) Hilarious. But the uh, what did you know? What What did he do? What did the father do? He he was Indian, like Indian, like like straight black hair, Indian, full Indian. Yes. Yeah, you know. in in Guyana he ran a uh, what is it a bodega store? Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. So he just ran a store like for her upbringing, but he hadn't done anything in yeah. years. Just retired, like whatever type thing. But it, you find so here's what's interesting about that. You find this a lot with, and I this was I alluded this to the last time the to the last time about immigrant parents. Mm-hmm. Immigrant parents are about survival. Oh, by yeah. the way, like he uh, he they didn't even live in the same country. So oh, he so, he was in Guyana. Uh, she was in Toronto. Oh, so she so she was he's unavailable to her. Yep. Yeah, and, I know. And so and this is you see how this, the pattern uh, happens again. It repeats itself. It does. She <laughs> wants unavailable. No, I, I, wow. I know. You yeah. know what's funny is I did notice that too. Like as a relationship, I'm like, man, you know, me and her father. <laughs> There's some striking similarities. I mean, the next guy she's gonna be with is gonna be an astronaut. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Mars. I don't know if you want to get married. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm going uh, to the space uh, uh, station. I'm staying there for three years. But then write we'll write have letters, kids when I come back. Write letters yeah. to people on death row. Yeah, Jesus, it's, it's so right? crazy that. So, yeah. That we repeat these same patterns but over and over again. What I find interesting is that she loves un- subconsciously wants unavailable people because her father is unavailable. Right. And yet, you like you were talking about, it becomes a thing of like, you're on the road too much. Yep. Why aren't you home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that that you becomes pick a the person fight. who's unavailable. And and then I'm basically the father argument she's always wanted. Right, to have, yeah, yeah. You know, and yell at. Well, it's also so. because there's a normalcy to that. Yep. Because whatever, whatever you do, to whatever, whatever you grow up in, 
is becomes your normal state, the homeostasis state. Yeah. And so whether you realize it or not, whether you recognize it on a cognitive level that maybe uh, I shouldn't be with a guy who's who's unavailable, a guy who's available feels pain, more painful to you because it's 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 not normal. Yep. It's it's different. Of course. And different is painful a lot of times. Even if same is abusive. Mm-hmm. Abusive becomes the norm and then you you it, you know, so often you see that, and then this repetitive thing, that, and then you say, then he, she goes and finds a pilot. Yeah. But isn't unavailable also attractive to men, too? Uh, Wait, well, hmm. I think for there's a maturity reasons. and an ego to it. I, I, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Like, because I know you're sort of painting the picture of women like men that are unavailable, but don't we also like women that are unavailable? Yeah, if you're if you're goofy and immature, <laughs> sure. Because, I mean, the the point of this is... But it's, it's not that. It's not that. You it's, know what it is? Unavailable yeah. equals status and equals power. Yes. And so oh, men right. are yeah. also addicted to that because we want to Value. we want to be on top of it yeah. and bring it. Who doesn't? So right. that's technically it's human. Status, status is the one thing that everyone craves. Sure, it's yeah. by far the biggest problem in the history of the world. Fight me on that if you want. No. Uh, but yeah, with that, that said, right. that's yeah. the point of relationships too. Would, We're always would, even relationships. We use status against each other in I the relationship would, to get say, what we want. I would say value instead of status. Nah, Be- because status. Why you say status? Status because uh, it's simple. We we all crave status. We live in a world where. But st- when you say status, explain what you mean by status. Like, what's the your definition of it? Of mine? Okay. No. Yeah, well, yeah. for status, easy. It's like uh, a term of basically where you are respected by as many people as possible. Where you could do things that others can't, and you could get away with things and. Basically, a lot of us in this society, in a westernized society, mm-hmm. care about, you know, we have such an elitism ath- oh. athlete attitude towards everything now, you know, that we all have to be singularly the best. No one's a team, right? We all have to have that. So here, you know, people singularly, that's why we have such dumb turns as the GOAT or yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, a legend or, or something right, like right. ridiculous like that. It's like that's... Yeah, it's e- it's ego. A big ego. But, but what a... <laughs> So here's where I would I would push. even in a relationship if you have higher status than the person you're dating you can call the shots more sure right absolutely. and that's something we also crave but, even in that but here's the thing when I the reason why I say value instead of status is because it depends on what the person sees as valuable mm-hmm. status so, could be value yeah right so status could be value but it doesn't necessarily have to be value because like I remember date I remember dating this detective I was twenty. 22 years old she was 34 something mm-hmm. like that and she was a detective like a captain in the in uh in, in the police force but big time stuff undercover the whole shit right and i was a 20 year old stripper okay i slept in the basement of this house on a futon yeah and i was hustling right of course. And the difference was, and she we've had, all been there in our twenties, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, especially Harry. <laughs> Harry, <laughs> <Absolutely>. nonstop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't sleep in a basement. I slept in my parents' home. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to besmirch your yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, <laughs> I've been trying to fit besmirched. Besmirched. In my, besmirched. Yeah, yeah. That was perfect. Uh, thank you, man. For, uh, just, you you. What a way to shoehorn that word in <laughs> to such a beautiful conversation. <laughs> so the um. But she had pension, 401k, condominium, real estate. Yep. She was set up, but worried about everything. Mm-hmm. Gave, what, I don't know, for this, if this happens, yep. what happens? This? And I was a dude who was just flying by the seat of my pants, and I didn't give a fuck. Yep. And she loved me because I had what she didn't have, which is was this carefree attitude. And I didn't have, I mean, I wasn't broke but i mean i was i wasn't you know you weren't independent uh, yeah, wealthy to, or anything i had to do some ghetto shows to pay my phone bill mm-hmm. you know what i mean <laughs> like, but you know what you know what's sort of funny is like it, wealth is a, one of the definitely things that you could use status on right, right but you don't need it in relationships rarely is status earned through wealth so even though one person could make more than the other or it could be in society considered a more respected form your status is clearly higher than hers in that relationship because you could conduct yourself more powerfully than her. So, right, but yeah, then, yeah. but this, but when I say when I say value is is it what that person values? So a woman never dates a guy who's not better than her, who hmm. she doesn't think is better. Now, better is a relative term. Yep. 
because it, you know, like Oprah dates Stedman. Stedman's <laughs> worth eleven million. Oprah's worth billions. Yeah. And but what's the difference? It's it's what she needs from him is not what she what what is not what she has. Yeah. She needs that somebody to say like I, I i used to tell this story all the time and watching oprah um years ago and um watching with my mom and she she's gonna she wants a dog so she goes to a labrador this is before rescues and shit <laughs> she went to a labrador retriever white yeah. lab uh breeder yeah she's like oh please oh he's, he's so cute i want them all now this bitch could have them all yep. she could buy all the labrador tr- retrievers in the world put them on buy an island put them all and call it labradoria if she wants of to course. uh stedman goes no you just won yep he goes uh i'll tell you what I'll pick one and you pick one. Now you know Stedman's not walking no fucking dog. This is, <laughs> so they pick two, and she says, "Okay, I don't know which one." And it just hit me. Here's a woman who's in such control yep. that she needs somebody who she can relinquish the control, and somebody who's confident enough to have somebody who could literally has enough money to erase you mm-hmm. to tell her no. Mm-hmm. This is, it. and that's what she valued. Yep. And Stedman doesn't have status, you know, status. The status is with her specifically. It is her respect for him because he's authentic, credible, and empathetic in the same. And he operates in the the light of that. And so, I mean, that's why I kind of say value. And the other thing is your actions give, uh, they communicate a subtext. Of course. And that subtext is what women are reading when they're attracted to men. Yep. It's not what comes out of your mouth. I got a BMW. I got it. When you they hear that, they're almost disgusted by that a lot of time. It's so much cooler when you just pick her up with the BMW. But what about the X factor? Which is? Which is the fact that, like, you know, uh, okay, so this is a big scientific thing but obviously our you know bodies have been around for ages Two hundred thousand years sure. the humans have been and five thousand we dante we've only been around this place <laughs> five thousand years right, was this also in the keys mally episode Reverend. that's true yeah that was uh, a lot of Reverend harry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the body wants to procreate that's yes. what our bodies want to do wanna absolutely do. Yeah. so that's obviously where the pheromones come in uh and they say that apparently like when you appreciate someone's smell that means you could have a baby with them yeah that's like sort of a, a scientific a way to, to, that we link. Yeah, yes. so it's like there's certain signs that your body does to create the attraction. So your body's also pulling you towards certain people. It's not even personality in some cases. Sure, but, sure. Uh, yeah, and that's also why it's like, you know, old people never yeah. smell good to young people. You right. can't procreate with that. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I never thought of that. Oh, wow. It's like you left food outside yeah. Yeah. for a I, long we kind time. Of rot- I mean, we are rotting. If yeah, yeah, Other yeah, old people don't think those old people stink, you know? They're like, yeah, we could do something, I guess, you know, but yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah, just but their nose old guys right. always think that young girls smell better, <laughs> right? That's yeah, true. They do. Don't matter. That's no true. matter what. And you right? know what smells really good? The what? inside of a Lamborghini Ooh. smells nice to a woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, smell you know, that. well, it's funny because we, we you know, this is some. I, it's weird because the fact that Mike uh, doing the show and having these discussions the discussions that we've had before. Sure, yeah. And so one of the things that I haven't talked about this in ages is that when you talk about attraction there's a there's a there's a cognitive level of attraction. Yes. And then there's this instinctual. So we have this instinctual That's bed right. that because we're animals and there's certain things that we we have developed through the 200,000 years that human beings have been on this earth that is just it is these those smell yep. uh you know what's the other one I always used to use um our ability to see faces. Mm, mm. Um, so, like, you know how you look at a plug and you go, oh, it's two eyes and a mouth. and the no-, You yep, know what I mean? Yep. That comes from us. And the house. Like, whenever I see a house, it's like two windows, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, the door the door sort of looks like the nose, yeah. right? And then the mouth is closed yeah. as a door stoke. Right, you know? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that- I, I was on shrooms. I remember I was, like, walking by at <laughs> every house. I was like, man, look at this dude's face. <laughs> I saw the first one. I was calling houses dudes. I was like, look at this dude. <laughs> Uh, but it, yeah. it's, it comes from our ability to see predatory animals in the foliage. Yes. So when you're looking at a grass area, you, you could see the eyes, the mouth, and stuff. Of course. That's 
genetically we've developed that. But on top of that is we need to procreate. So our is, body is, also needs to figure out how right. to survive yeah. on a, on an instinctual level. Mm -hmm. But then because we've developed in, on this cognitive level, what happens is those instinct those instincts seep through the 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 social con contract. Dude, that Guyanese girl. I'm not even lying to you, man. It's like I <laughs> she couldn't be in a room with me. For months without me getting an erection, just naturally, right? Really? And then all of a sudden, her, her hips grew. That was the scariest thing when her breasts really? and hips start growing. I was wow. like, what is this? You know, I was wow. like, geez. But uh, wow. yeah, me and her, we were on a weird level too, okay. where it was just very instinctual, very physical, very, you know. We just so it, it, it wasn't anything, and then all of a sudden, her it's like her. You, you're saying her body kind of transformed yeah, it just, to, attra yes. to attract you. Well, not even just to attract me. Like, we were together for when that started happening. But it was like, it just looked like it was getting ready to, you know, yeah. procreate if it needed to. Right, right. You know? It's, it's like, yeah, yeah. Like, when we were around and, like, like I say, my erections, I was just getting them. Like, I was constantly aroused by this woman, you right. know? And I was like, yeah, we just had a hell of a love life, you know, wow. when it came that way. So. And it wasn't like that prior to that. Like, no. And it, and it just fizzled out or, or the newness well, fell off and then it fizzled out or? No, no, we always actually had uh, you always like had an it. attraction to the bodies. But uh, it, yet again, it's just like a power battle, yeah. right? It was another thing of she absolutely beautiful smoke show of a woman, mm. but uh, maybe a little bit more insecure than I was because I was on tour and comedy's ah. also always served as a uh, yeah. power tool for me because – you right. know, I got something I love yeah. that I feel proud of, and you and you and some people don't have that, and, that, and you're validated every time you do. I'm it. very validated. Yeah. You know, maybe not financially sometimes. <laughs> I, mean, I get it. But it doesn't matter because I act like I am. Right. Right. You know, yeah. so you could like it's funny about comics who have good sets. We act like we we just won a million dollars. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that presents to us whenever we go around talking to people afterwards. Anytime I've seen you, you always have a smile on your face. Yeah, yeah legitimately. Absolutely. I mean, you're a very happy guy. It seems it. I'm actually, I'm actually, because I'm lucky. Like, I, it's go. funny because now I've looked over, like. Plenty of people are lucky. Yeah, but they, I've, like, they, looked they over my life and I've also though. realized, too, that, like, if things were to come down on me right now, I did so, I achieved so many goals. Right. And did so many things I'm so proud of that I, I have to only look at it as grateful not that I got like to do that. it. I mean, there's people yes. complaining about the quality of their private jet right now or the, <laughs> yeah. the green room at the theater that they're performing at in front of, you know, 5,000 people. And yes. you know, I talked not... to um, Nathaniel, uh, uh, Nathaniel Nate McIntyre. Ma Nate yeah. McIntyre. Uh, he is, Nathan McIntosh. He is so upset about his career, and I keep saying to him, I said, Doug, you get to do what you love yes. every day, and you do it at a high level, and mm. people, re your peers and people respect you extensively, yeah. and you but earn he, money doing it. I think he also knows that's where his humor comes from. So he needs to uh, he needs to self sabotage himself that, that is, way. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, like yeah. some comics know where their well is, yeah, and yeah. I think they're like, oh, I gotta be, you know, He's pissed. He, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. and he, he, once you start being grateful, it's like Sam Kinison. Once he like that first special he had was great. After that, he was starting to get really, he, uh, yeah. he really dropped off. And that's like and Mike Tyson. He was trying it's, to find it, things to be yeah. to yeah. angry off, but he couldn't because yeah. he was when partying with celebs. He was doing yeah. everything he wanted. Girls, yeah, he started sons. selling out really hard. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, you know, it's not the same well for you anymore. You know, like you clearly you went to a different well. Two chicks at the same time. Yeah, right. A third less attractive chick walks into the room. Spitz and he's the baddest, like, he's dude, like, at that time. He ballooned, yeah, he was, right? He was yeah. Banging yeah. models that, you know, have no right. <laughs> but, but even that, you know, when you talk about how he was pulling these models, there was a, there's a subtext that he was constantly communicating as value because there's dudes yes. with, with plenty. I mean, I get calls from guys who get got plenty money yep. and can't get laid. Yep. Or if they get laid, it's all, it's a quid pro quo with them selling out dough to, and then and then they're not fucking them yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. I mean, that is extensively going on because you don't understand how to... You how know to, what's so weird, too, is it's really just confidence. Confidence. I've seen ugly men with confidence yes. get laid constantly. Yeah. So if you just don't have confidence, if something happened to you in your past where you just can't bring that out, yeah, you're going to struggle yeah. whether you have money or not. Like yeah. People are like, oh, women are so addicted to money. <laughs> it's like they're addicted they're to confidence. Yeah. yeah, Confidence is like a, the well, ultimate sexy. I, I think it's it's like, even simpler than that. It's just if you meet a woman, I, I always ask dudes, how does she get to know you? Yeah. You tell her. 
Of course. You tell her who you are. Yep. You t- and then with your body language, your 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 energy, you tell her what you think you are yep. and what your value is. And when you, if you come in and you're like, no, oh, I don't know, maybe if you want to go out with me once, maybe. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody's looking at at fucking. Um, By the way, you know what's funny about this is like that? I've been doing Tinder dates for the last like I guess month, two months, and yeah. I keep pushing my podcast every <laughs> Tinder date. <laughs> it's hilarious that you're that you brought this up only because like I remember joking about it to a buddy, and he's like, oh, do you know that's how Elvis Presley did it? It's like he had all these songs, and every woman he dated, he's like, you got to listen to these songs, and he'd play it, and obviously, you know, they were all romantic yeah, songs, yeah, yeah. but like he was legitimately so proud Promoting, of what he was, he was doing yeah. that he was he was telling people, and he could tell people freely. That's almost but the same with my podcast. But what's the subtext or, of that? Oh, that like, this, you didn't call This it. is valuable. Of course. This is valuable, and I'm valuable. I'm somebody that brings to life I bring good things, creativity to life, and I make life better. Yeah. And how does she know that? You tell her. You may not go, hey, guess what? I bring things. You, but the, you're just, your energy says that I have yeah. value. And a, a lot of times the guys will say, I'll get guys and I'll do consultation. Like, well, how, do you, how do you gain the confidence? <laughs> you got to do the work. Yep. If you're like, one of the things that I thought that really resonated me with me when you said it's like, man, you were almost saying, look, if I die tomorrow, I've accomplished so much good in my life yeah. that I'm, I'm like, I'm so pleased with that. And that is, that communicates with people. And not, not that you think it's over. No. Nope. But you, but you know that you did the work and the value to that. I mean, you've always been a, from the day I met you. You was a hustler. Mm-hmm. You were getting it in. Yo, who's working, this? Always, always. Yeah, working. that's that's weird too. Like when the pandemic came and like our whole industry imploded. Yeah. Uh, it turns out being a workaholic doesn't stop. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. that was my thing. All of a sudden, I was like, "You're right." Going out and doing park shows because I just had to. Yeah. Not because I yeah. necessarily thought that was a brilliant use of my did time. Did you do the Zoom stuff? I, yeah, and I still do, right? I couldn't, I, I couldn't do this. I, I did the Zoom stuff. I, I, I still make almost a grand a month now on Zoom shows. Really? So I could still put them together. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. So I it's think, like, Dante, you, you could do the Zoom shows if they paid. <laughs> if you were getting paid, you'd suck it up and do them. Yeah. Well, that's uh, a funny thing because there's still like fundraising shows. Really? Like, yeah, yeah all over. Zoom? And it's Jesus. like, yeah, because there's yeah, so many other countries that are. There's so many opportunities for that yeah now. i just booked judah friedlander on a on a zoom fundraiser for march mm. so i haven't seen Ju- is judah not come out no he hasn't, he hasn't come out he's anything. been two years i think solitude just inside. solitude right yeah. yeah just doing the zoom show yeah he I can't go outside really. yeah, yeah yeah it's not his thing oh wow right well, he's fucked up about it like he yeah yeah, yeah he's avoiding it yeah. so but uh yeah where were we talking about i had a great point and i lost uh, it <laughs> Uh, Zoom value, work, the value, be workaholic. You were saying, how oh yeah, 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 just the workaholic, and then that's where it's like all of a sudden I, I put together those sketches, and all of a sudden I won all those awards for like, where's my white privilege and delusional man, that I'm yeah. s- still getting, and then that led me yet again to my podcast that is now was nominated for funniest podcast of 2021, mm. and we mm. lost. <laughs> well, <laughs> just, who won? just uh, yeah, but nobody I forget. Yeah. But Bill Burr was with us too. He lost too. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I thought oh, he geez. was gonna kill us. You yeah. know, but uh, yeah, it was just like it was just like one of those things where, like, all of a sudden, you're right. You put in the work because yeah. that does, and it's funny that you say value because yeah, maybe maybe as a workaholic, that's what I've always seeked. Like, yeah. if we're gonna do a therapist I thing mean, on me, is that I've always wanted to be valuable. You right. know, like as a human being, you should, yeah, right to a degree, but like have your own value, something you're proud of. Like, I'm so grateful now that I could like speak so passionately about some of the projects I've done, right, and tell people about them because like. I remember one uh, of like the six sketches uh, I put out and made. Uh, one of them didn't turn out the way I liked, mm. and you could tell by how much I promoted that one. <laughs> right, like the other five promoted fully. Uh-huh. That one has like You're the like, smallest mm-hmm. amount of views on my YouTube. Yeah. I was looking at my promo. I was like, I just like sort of brought it up. Like, oh, by the way, I did this little sketch. What's the, <laughs> what's the uh, your, your YouTube so the fans can? Oh, Michael take... Harrison, comedian. Okay. You'll find me. Okay, yeah, 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 that's cool. I always like to you know let them. Uh, oh, and my podcast his... is called Character Debates, okay. where I make uh, comedians debating characters. Second episode has Harry. I did. I yeah, was, I was an Olympian who had to 
debate whether or not Olympic wrestling was real. Yeah, with against Dwayne the Rock, the Rock Johnson, <laughs> who was played by Luke Thayer of all oh, people. Yeah, 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 it's fun, man. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, so I broke down a lot. It was an audio podcast, so I would break down a lot in between oh, Luke, lose yeah, me. yelling at me, <laughs> yeah, in a in his white voice, calling me a Rudy Pukan. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that, yeah, that was my favorite part too. Is when he was talking about doing the ladder match with a semi. And it's like, you can't even find that semi. <laughs> <laughs> it goes off the rails, but it's yeah. it's fun as fuck, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. How's the Tinder thing going for you, as dating wise? Like, what is how's that experience? For you? Is this the first time using Tinder? Um, I I think I used it briefly before. Yeah, uh, but n- nothing that I remember doing. Like and I think maybe one or two dates before. Yeah. You know what's so funny? The one thing I remember learning about Tinder uh, is always do a coffee date. Try to do it an hour so on the you first day. You can get away if you have to. Yes. I I screwed up really bad. I remember oh on one Tinder. It will just. First off, the girl was great. Like she was Indian, beautiful, and her face. You know, she looked just like her pictures and none of that. But you know, she wanted to talk first, and we talked over the phone. And it's funny we had this chemistry and everything. And yet again, it's that instinctual thing. The minute she met me in person in the coffee shop, I just didn't. We we had nothing to say to each other. Really? We all of a sudden there was like no electricity. Like all that stuff was easy to be generated. There is something to an in person encounter as opposed to what your relationship is online. Yeah, because in person, something about the body language, something about like me, maybe I don't you know. Don't know what it is. You you can't. I it couldn't even explain it. All I knew is I didn't really feel. Like opening up to her, we just didn't have the type of camaraderie think- that we had over the phone or any of that jazz. And legitimately, 15 minutes in, I told her I was a Trump supporter and started an argument so uh- she could leave. And yeah, that was like what, 2016, 17. Like, it, oh boy. Yeah, she, yeah, because I could tell what her affiliation was. Yeah. So I did that and I was like, well, that's the best way to get have a date quick. <laughs> <laughs> Tell people you're a Trump really? supporter, oh, right? Man. Like here in New York, that always works. It seems so. Uh, yeah, that that now, I, that's when I learned. I'm like, oh yeah, if this ever happens again, don't give them an day. afternoon or something. Short Just day, yeah. Let me, let me have you. a gig and yeah. have them come out to a coffee shop for an hour before, and then you can jet. Let's um, let's shut this down. We're gonna do a little thing for the Patreon, a little after hour thing. Is that cool? Can yeah, you sure. Um, plug all your stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm on uh, Instagram, Michael Harrison Comedian, uh, I think. <laughs> and uh, Character Debates is my podcast. It's one of the funniest podcasts. Nominated uh, for funniest podcast of the year. 100%. Harry's on episode two. I'm on episode two. Number two. It. Yeah. Uh, at Harry Trajanian is all my stuff. So. Uh, Google me, bitch. And uh, this this do uh, GYBB Get Your Balls Back, WWDD. What would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Please support us on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Manschool202. And if y'all need a one-on-one consultation, just hit me at DanteNero.com. Click on consult, and you can book time with me. I love y'all, man. We're going to go to the Patreon and kick it around back there. Uh, And uh, join up, man. This is how you support us, and this is how we keep doing this. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Out.